honorable ministers and distinguished guests, the annual report on the activities of the Commission of 2014 has been submitted for your consideration. It highlights the work that was done by the Commission since we last met on Agenda 2063 and steps undertaken with the RECs and member states to accelerate continental integration and realize the aspirations of, the peop of our peoples for a united, prosperous, and peaceful Africa driven by its people and acting as a dynamic force in global affairs. After two years of consultations with civil society, the diaspora, the citizens, the experts, planners, governments, member states, RECs, AU organs, we are presenting Agenda 2063 for adoption by the summit this year. We will also report on the work in progress with regards to the first 10 year plan, Agenda 2063, so that we can be ready for adoption at the June summit. Soon after the summit, we shall convene a meeting of the RECs, sectorial experts, civil society, and planners from member states to do more work on the 10 year plan as well as process of integration and domestication of Agenda 2063 in national and regional development plans. The work on the 10-year plan means a concerted shift towards focusing on implementation of the continental vision. A number of critical issues arise from this, which we would like to bring to the attention of the executive. Firstly, as mandated by Malabo, we have done work on the Agenda 2063 flagship projects, which will be covered in the report of the Badia Ministerial Follow-up Committee. These flagship integration projects, such as single aviation markets, the Grand Inga Dam and, for energy pro and other energy projects, Pan-African University, the high-speed rail and network, and Pan-African e-network, the continental free trade area, the African passport and commodity strategy, the Malabo plan on agriculture, should form the basis of this 10-year plan and must signal decisive movement in areas of continental priority. The centrality of human development and security in all of this cannot be overestimated. As we are learning the hard lessons from the Ebola virus outbreak on the need to have resilient public health systems and for integrated responses. Secondly, we will review the capacity required for the implementation of Agenda 2063. Because if we don't attend to that, we will not be able to implement it. We have agreed with the African Capacity Building Foundation that they will do a study for us quickly uh, about, that will include the institutional capacities required at all levels, at member states level, REC and AU, as well as civil society. It also includes looking at a broader African human resource context, the technical, professional and other skills, but especially in the areas of science, technology, engineering, research, project management and innovation. And these would be critical for the implementation of the flagship projects, but also for Agenda 2063 as a whole. In the areas where we have skills deficit, we have to take continental and regional approaches, such as we are doing through the Pan-African University, our focus on virtual ed education, and also draw on our diaspora. 
We will continue engagement with the African University, vocational and private sectors on these issues, such as at the Higher Education Summit in Dakar in March this year. Thirdly, we must assess the institutional appropriateness of the current AU structures, processes, and working methods for the implementation of Agenda 2063. 